All right, so in this problem, I have two to the power of 20 minus two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of x. So I'm gonna first start by rewriting 20 as 19 plus one. So now I have two to the power of 19 plus one minus two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of x. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So in this case, I have two to the power of 19 plus one, and this is gonna equal two to the power of 19 times two to the power of one. And I have this minus two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of x. Now from here, if I factor out two to the power of 19 from my left-hand side, I get two to the power of 19 times two to the power of one minus one is equal to 16 to the power of x. And two to the power of one minus one, that's simply equal to one. And anything times one is itself. So I have two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of x. Now, 16, that's the same thing as two to the power of four. So now I have two to the power of 19 is equal to two to the power of four to the power of x. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So two to the power of four to the power of x, that's gonna equal two to the power of four times x, which is also two to the power of four x. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, 19 is equal to 4x. Now we have a simple equation here. All I have to do is divide both sides by four and I get x is equal to 19 over four. Now to check, my original equation was two to the power of 20 minus two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of x. Now, two to the power of 20 minus two to the power of 19, we already know that's two to the power of 19. So we get two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of 19 over four. Now 16, that's the same thing as two to the power of four. So now I have two to the power of four to the power of 19 over four. And these two fours cancel out. So I get two to the power of 19 is equal to two to the power of 19. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be solving the equation seven to the power of x is equal to 70. So before we start on our solution, let's notice that this is an exponential equation, and x is an exponent, which is the variable we're solving for. So, let's just try to plug in a number. Let's start with one. So we have seven to the power of one, and this is equal to seven. Now, let's go one higher. Let's go seven to the power of two. This is equal to 49. And now let's go one higher. Let's go seven to the power of three. This is equal to 349. So notice how we're trying to find what value of x to, that we should take the power of seven to equal 70, but even the number three is much, results in a number much higher than 70, meaning the value of x is gonna be a decimal somewhere in between two and three. So now to actually solve for x, My equation is seven to the power of x is equal to 70. And what I'm first gonna do, and what I recommend doing for any exponential equation such as this, is taking the log on both sides. And the reason that you should do this is because now you can use the property log a to the power of b I can move the speed to the front, so I get b times log a. Log a to the power of b is equal to b times log a. And the reason this property is so useful 
is because it's before x was an exponent and it's really hard to solve for x in its previous state but now i can move x to the front and it's going to be an actual term so now i get x times log 7 is equal to log 70. Now, log 70 is the same thing as log of 7 times 10. And another property of logarithms is that if I have something in form log a times b, this is equal to log a plus log b. So log of 7 times 10 is going to equal log of 7 plus log of 10. So now from here, what I'm going to do is divide both sides by log 7. Because we obviously want to isolate x, so the only way to do that is to get rid of this log 7. So then these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to log 7 plus log 10 over log 7. And I can rewrite this as log 7 over log 7 plus log 10 over log 7. Now log 7 and log 7 cancel out. So I get x is equal to 1 plus log 10 over log 7. And if you guys already didn't know, log 10 is actually equal to 1. So now I get x is equal to 1 plus 1 over log 7. And this is my answer.